Okay, this is the unit three study guide answer key. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do the answers to the entire study guide that we um, that I stuck up there on Friday. So hopefully you guys have looked at it. If not, then get out the study guide and follow along. Okay, we're going to start with history of the atom. So who discovered subatomic particles? That was J.J. Thompson. I know originally we had said that he discovered the electron. Really, he just discovered that there were negatively charged particles. And then he thought it was, remember, he thought it was um, the plum pudding model was his model. He thought that those negatively charged particles were in a positively charged mass. But basically, he discovered that atoms have subatomic particles. Who did a gold foil experiment and discovered that atoms contain a small, dense central region called a nucleus? That was Rutherford. And then who discovered neutrons? Well, that was his student, Chadwick. And then who discovered that electrons travel the nucleus in energy levels? And that was Bohr. Okay, now we're going to look at atomic structure. What is an isotope? Isotopes are atoms of the same element with differing mass numbers. In other words, they have the same number of protons, just different numbers of neutrons. How do you calculate the number of neutrons in an atom? You subtract the atomic number from the mass number. So basically it's mass number minus, here, let me write that down. It's mass number minus atomic number. Okay. Now, where is most of the mass of an atom found? Well, that's in the nucleus. Okay, so you gotta remember one proton is one AMU, one neutron is also one AMU, and one electron is one 1836 AMU. So it's about 2000 times lighter and smaller than a proton or a neutron. So all of that mass is found in the nucleus, not, in, not with the electrons. And then true or false, the atom is mostly empty space. Well, that's true. Okay, so how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in the following isotopes? So yes, we're going to use the periodic table to look up the atomic numbers. I'm actually going to scoot this slide up just a little bit for now. There we go. Okay, so let's look at copper. Copper has an atomic number of 29. Okay, so that means it has 29 protons, 29 electrons, and then 64 minus 29 is 35. So 35 neutrons. Arsenic, AS, it has atomic number 33. So it has 33 protons, 33 electrons, and then 75 minus 33 is 42. So 42 neutrons. Bromine, BR, is number 35. So it has 35 protons, 35 electrons, and then 75. 9 minus 35 is 44 neutrons. Let's look at oxygen. Oxygen is atomic number 8. 8 protons, 8 electrons, and then 18 minus 8 is 10 neutrons in this isotope. Tungsten. Tungsten is 74. Well, W. W, by the way, stands for tungsten. This has 74 protons. Oops. Can't read my P. 74 electrons and 184 minus 74 is 110 neutrons in this isotope. And that's all there is to it. Hopefully, you guys get this one. Okay. What is the mass number of an element that has eight protons, eight electrons, and eight or in nine neutrons? Well, you got to remember the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So that means it's eight plus nine. So the mass number is 17. Okay, so now we're gonna do the average atomic mass. So once again, I'm gonna move this slide up a little bit. What is the average atomic mass of an element that has the following isotopes? So if you remember with that average atomic mass, it is the atomic mass or the mass number. So like here, I said one, two, and three, those really aren't the mass numbers. I didn't give you the mass numbers, but I'm telling you these are the atomic masses. So it's either the atomic mass or the mass number times the relative abundance. And then we're gonna take everything and divide by a hundred because the abundances are percentages. 
So you can do this in three steps. You can do it 78.993 times 10.32 and then get an answer and then do the next one, get an answer, do the next one and get an answer and then add them all up and then divide by 100. You can do that. I'm not going to. I'm doing it the easy way. And what I'm going to do is stick it in the calculator exactly as I'm writing it here. And that should give me the right answer. Plus, So you've got to put the parentheses if you're going to do it this way. The other way, you don't have to do parentheses. And times 68.91. Oops. Actually, hang on a second. I put. Oh, come on. Let's get rid of that. That was supposed to be a plus sign. Plus 74.226 times 20.77. And then I'm going to take, whoops, goodness. I have some trouble writing today. I'm going to take all of that and then I'm going to divide by 100. And when I put this all in the calculator, I get 75.33 AMU. I'm rounding it to two places past the decimal because the relative abundances are. If this were a test and it was a short answer test, short answer question, I would tell you how many places to round it. If it's multiple choice, be rounded to the proper place. So you don't have to worry about rounding it. Okay. So hopefully that's the answer you got. If not, um, ask me a question. Okay. Now we're going to do the light equations. Okay. So what is the frequency? So we've got frequency, asking for frequency of a wave with a wavelength of 4.76 times 10 to the fourth meters. Well, there's only one equation that deals with frequency and wavelength. And that's that one. So now remember, I also gave you two different equations with this. So if we solve for frequency, because it's what is the frequency. So we want frequency equals. We're going to move the wavelength to under the C. Okay. So V equals 3.0 times 10 to the eighth divided by 4.76 times 10 to the fourth. Now in the calculator, I'm going to put it this way. 3 E8 divided by 4.76 E E4. And when I do that, I get 6302 point something. So, but my answer shouldn't be like this. We need to put the answer in scientific notation. So the answer is we're going to move the decimal one, two, three places times 10 to the three. And remember, frequency is hertz. Okay. So that's that one. Okay. What is the wavelength? of a wave with a frequency of 3.5 times 10 to the minus 2 hertz. So we have wavelength and we want frequency. So wavelength is C divided by frequency. 3.0 times 10 to the eighth divided by 3.5 times 10 to the minus 2. Once again, we're going to put it into the calculator as 3 E8 divided by 3.5 EE minus 2. And when I do that, I get a whole slew of numbers. 8, 5, 7, 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, 1. Which means you have to put that into scientific notation. So it's going to be 8.57 times 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Times 10 to the ninth meters. Remember, wavelength is in meters. Okay. Okay. So what is the energy of a photon having a frequency of 4.0 times 10 to the 20th? So E equals HV. Now, all along, if you remember the original notes, I gave you 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 was Planck's constant. And then for some reason, I have no clue why, I started using 6.62. So we have to go back to using the correct number because this test, the numbers, I use 6.626 in order to do the calculations. So if you use 6.62, you're going to be a little off. It shouldn't be that much. You should be able to find the answer, but 
for this review, we're going to use 6.626. So 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 times 4.0 times 10 to the 20th. Now this one, you can use the EE button or you don't have to. It doesn't matter because you're just doing all multiplication. You're not doing any division. So I still, to me, it seems easier. And plus you want to be in the habit of using the EE button. So it'd be 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. Actually, sorry, 6.626 EE negative 34 times 4 EE 20. And when you do that, you get an answer of 2.65 times 10 to the negative 13. And of course, energy is joules. Okay. Okay, this next one. What is the frequency of a photon having 7.0 times 10 to the negative 16 joules of energy? Now, if you look at this equation, this time we're going to be solving for frequency. So frequency is E divided by H. So frequency is 7.0 times 10 to the negative 16 divided by 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. So in the calculator, you're going to do 7 EE negative 16 divided by 6.626 EE negative 34. And when you do that, you get 1.06 times 10 to the 18th hertz. Okay. Okay. What is the approximate energy of a photon having a wavelength of 3.87 times 10 to the minus 8? So this time we're using this equation because it's the only one with energy and wavelength, not frequency. So 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. Now, remember on the test, you're going to have to show your calculations. So you're going to have to show your calculations for the light equations. Those are the only ones. And I'll even put on there on the question, show your work. And if you don't and you get it right, I can't count it because I don't know that you didn't get the answer from somebody. So you have to show your work on this. So please remember to do that. And don't write me, don't email me and say, Miss Edmonds, can I see my test? I don't remember what questions I had. Oops, sorry. No. And you don't get credit for it. So what you need to do is make sure you write it down as you go and then upload it. Because if you ask me afterwards, I'm going to be like, no, nope, sorry. You can't do it because that means you probably, I'm going to think you cheated. Maybe you didn't, but I'm going to think you cheated. So just don't, let's just make sure you have it written down. Don't throw it away and then upload it right away. Okay, so now we're doing the wavelength, 3.87 times 10 to the minus 8. Okay, so this time we're going to use the EE button again. You're going to do 6.626 EE negative 34 times 3 EE 8 divided by 3.87 EE negative 8. And when you do that, you get 5.14 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Okay, so hopefully you all you understand all that. And if you have any questions, once again, you can always get a hold of me and I can do a tutoring session for you before the test. Okay, this time we're going to talk about electrons and atoms. So hang on, let me move this up. Okay, so how many orbitals are in each of the four sublevels? Well, in S, there's a one. P, there's a three, there's three, D, there's five, and F, there's seven. And then the next question, how many electrons can go in one orbital? Two electrons. And remember, one of them's counterclockwise and one of them's clockwise. So we always show it with an arrow up and an arrow down. How many total electrons can go in each sublevel? So let me move this up. That means an S can have two, a P can have six, a D can have 10, and an F can have 14. Okay, electron configuration. We need to write the full electron configuration of these five elements. So let me move this up. 
let's we're going to start with sr now sr we're going to use our colored periodic table the one we colored by blocks first we're going to find sr and if you scan it and scan it and scan it it is on the left hand side and it is number 38. now on the test i'm probably going to put the atomic number on there i won't just say sr i would say sr with a 38 just because it makes it easier for you to find and i because i don't want you to spend too much time trying to locate the element on the periodic table okay so now if you look at the per colored periodic table it's in row five and ends at s2 so the last thing i'm going to write on here is 5s2 so we're going to look at the periodic table and go through so if we start at the top we have 1s2 so we'll go through all of those go down to the next level we go through 2s2 go all the way over we go through two p's so that leaves us 2p6. That gives us neon. And now the next level is 3s2. Go over there to where aluminum is. We got 3p6. Now we're to argon. We got to keep on going. The next one is 4s2. Now, if you look, the next one is 3d, but we go all the way through it. So 3d10. And then we come to gallium. And that's in, back in the fourth level again. So it's 4. P6 and then 5S2. And if you don't want to use your periodic table, just use that list I gave you, which says 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P, 4S, 3D, 4P, 5S. And then just put how many electrons are in each one. And just to be safe, you want to count all these up. So 2 plus 2 plus 6 is 10, plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 is 20. Then another 10 is 30 and then 38. So I got the right amount. Okay, so let's do copper next. Copper is number 29. And if you look where it ends, copper ends at the D9 and it's 3D9. So we're gonna go, and really with having SR above us, it's really easy. So it's 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d9. So, and then if you count this up, this should be 29. And it is. Okay, next is arsenic, as. And as is number 33. So it ends at 4p3. So we can use the periodic table, or since we already have these written, we're just going to go to right there, the 4P. So 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2, 3D10, 4P, and what did I say it was? It was 4P3, okay? And then if you add these up, it should add up to 33, and it does. Okay, chlorine, which is 17. If you find chlorine, it ends at 3P5. So we only have to go to here and we put a five instead of a six. So 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P5. Okay, and next we have krypton, which is 36. Now, this time I'm gonna go back to using, I'm gonna hide all of this and I'm gonna go, well, We'll keep that there. We're going to go ahead and start using, we're going to use the periodic table again, just to remember, to remind you guys how to use it. So if we start up at hydrogen, hydrogen and helium. If we do 1s2, we end at helium. Then we're going to go down to the next level. 2s2 gets us to beryllium. And then 2p6 gets us to neon. Then 3s2 gets us to magnesium. 3P6 gets us to argon. Now, let's, before we go any further, we know Krypton's in the fourth row, so we're gonna end at 4P6. So we gotta keep on going. So after 3P6, we're gonna go to the fourth row. 4S2 gets us to calcium. And then we're gonna do 3D10, which gets us to zinc. And then 4P6 ends at Krypton. And once again, just to be safe, you want to go ahead and add up all your electrons and they should add up to 36. 
Okay, now we're going to do orbital diagrams. So chlorine 17, I'm going to rewrite the electron configuration. Really, the easiest way to do this is to write the electron configuration first, then you can make the boxes. Remember, the orbital diagrams are the boxes. So these are the boxes. And on this one, I was I made it so that you didn't have to do the Ds, which have five boxes in them. You only had to do Ps, which only have three. So I kind of made it easy for you guys. Okay, so 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. Okay, so we're going to do a 1s. 2s, then 2p6. So you have to write all three boxes in the 2p. This one's full. Then we have a 3s2, and then a 3p here. Now remember when you're filling these up, they go up first. So there's three of them, and then they come back through and go down. If this one only had one, two, or three electrons, there would be just one arrow up in each box. You wouldn't have the one down. Remember, it's got to fill up one each first, and then it fills up double. Okay, so that's chlorine. Now, potassium. K is atomic number 19. So I'm going to go ahead and do the electron configuration of this first. So 1s2. 2s2, 2p6, that gets us to neon. And then we're going to do down to 3. 3s2 gets us to magnesium. 3p6 gets us to argon. And then 4s1. So really, it looks like chlorine with just a, with a couple more electrons. So we're going to do the 1s. Then we're going to do the 2s, 2p, 2p. Then we're going to do the 3s. And we're going to do the 3p. Well, this time we're going to fill it up and then 4s1, because 4s only has one. And that's it for that. Okay, write the electron configuration using noble gas notation or noble gas shorthand for iodine, manganese, tungsten, xenon, and polonium. Okay, so once again, I'm going to write down the element and I'm going to give you the um, atomic number. And as I said, on the test, you'll have the atomic number. So MN is 25. Okay. And the next one is W, which is 74. Xenon, which is 54. And polonium, which is 84. Okay. Let me move this up a little bit before we start. Okay. So I'm going to start with iodine. Now, iodine. If you look at iodine, it is in the fifth row. In fact, it's right next to xenon. So I've got to go to the end of the fourth row. The end of the fourth row is krypton. So that's where I'm going to start. Now, I'm going to use the periodic table. I'm not going to even worry about adding electrons. You can if you want. And if you do, don't forget that krypton has 36 to start with. But I'm going to use the periodic table. So I start with krypton, and I go down to the beginning of the fifth row. So 5s2 gets me to strontium. And I'm not quite there yet. So now I have to go to the next row and it's four or the next set of things and it's 4d10 is next. That gets me to cadmium. And now I hit the, the five Ps. And if you notice, iodine ends at 5p5. If you want to add up the electrons, you're more than welcome to. Krypton has 36, so 38, 48 and then 53, so it does add up. Okay, so the next one, let's do manganese. Okay, manganese is in the fourth row. 
So the end of the third row is argon. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the beginning of the fourth row. So then I have 4s2, that gets me to calcium, and then 3d. And if you look at manganese, it ends at D5. And if you want to add the electrons, once again, you have 18, 19, 20, plus 5 is 25. Okay, now let's go to W. W is 74, and it is in the sixth row. So we have to go to the end of the fifth row, which is xenon. Okay, so after xenon, we come back down to the sixth row. We start with 6s2. That gets us to barium. Now, there's that 57 to 60, that little star right in front of the 5D. That means we have to go to the 4F next. Now we do 4F14, that gets us all the way to ytterbium, YB. Okay, now we go back up to the 5D and 5D. And if you notice, tungsten ends at 5D4. And if you want to add up the electrons, so 54 plus 2 is 56. 56, 66, 70, 74. So we've got the number, right number of electrons. Okay, so let's go to xenon. Now, xenon is the end of the fifth row. So it is a noble gas, which means we actually have to go to the end of the fourth row, which is krypton. So we're going to start with krypton. Now we're going to go back down to the fifth row. And so we're going to do 5s2. Okay, go through 4d and then 5p6, since it's the end of the row. So if we want to count, so it's 36, 37, 38, 48, 54. Okay, well, last but not least is polonium. Polonium at 84 is in the sixth row. So the end of the fifth row is xenon. Then we're going to start with 6s2. That gets us to barium. 4f14 gets us to a terbium. And then 5D10 gets us all the way to mercury. And then polonium is at the 6P4. Okay, so hopefully you guys understood that. Hopefully this is easy for you. If you have any questions, just ask. But I think if you guys can do this study guide, you guys are pretty good. You should do pretty good on the test. So good luck on the test. Bye.